<laughs> Robin. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. On the virus. Serious XM. Hey, oh, no. Paris, what's up? How are Good you? morning. How are you Welcome Good to the Opie you. and Anthony show. Take a Thank seat. You. Contrary to popular and, belief, we and, are on the air. And Kevin Smith. People don't know this. Kevin Smith to your left. Hi, sir. How are you? Oh, hey. He was supposed to do your show tonight. I yes. was, yeah, we moved it to Los Angeles or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. And Jim Norton. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Anthony, Hopi, yeah. Sam, who cares? About <laughs> yeah. He's just doing How's it been, man, taking over? It's been great. It's, uh, you know, when you take over a gig like uh, the Larry King Show, it's a pretty amazing honor, right. a challenge. I mean, you know, I, I've done um, about 15 shows. I feel absolutely exhausted. Yeah, sure. And someone mm. said to me, Larry did 7,000. Yeah. <laughs> Get oh, over man. yourself. It's like, uh, it's a very relentless pace, but it's been great fun. I mean, you know, I, I, Larry's been so nice to me about it all. And uh, We miss Larry just because he was kind of messing up at the end there. <laughs> no, <he's laughs> I know you're not going to say anything, Piers. No, I understand. No, I'm not, I'm not. So let us say it. It, it, was, it was fantastic TV that last year. <laughs> <laughs> Got a really bunch of was, things wrong, man. Really was fun. And, when, and we heard when we heard he was retiring, we were a little bummed. But we're happy for you, though. <laughs> thank you, thank Because it made for great morning radio. Some of this <laughs> clips. <laughs> well, I'll try and keep you filled with uh, with mistakes. Don't worry. Are you going to do all pre tapes or any like political stuff like he did day of? No, I mean last week every day was live. Oh, was, uh, okay. on, e on Egypt, um, and then before that we had a few pre tapes, few live shows. But I mean, I'm going to mix it all up because um, you know I like to keep it unpredictable. Some will be pre taped some will be. Live. I like it when you pre tape. Let's say Oprah Winfrey. We got it in the in the tape for about a week. You can then start leaking stuff out everywhere and everyone's you know we're a huge audience because we yeah. already promote it right. so I'm not really sold on it has to be live for the sake of it sometimes and, live's good but other and, times it's good and I'm paying attention and I am watching Oprah screwed you too <laughs> she, had, she had that half sister thing in her back pocket. I know. I and she doesn't th give it to you on CNN. No way. It gets worse. I did t the two interviews I did through the, uh, December into January were Elton John, who forgot to tell me he was about to have a baby. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even tell me he was pregnant. And then I interviewed <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. And so I went back on her show last week and I went, Can I ask you one more question? And she went, Yeah. yeah. I said, I know it's a bit late because our interview's there, but. Do you have any half sisters called Patricia that I should know about? <laughs> you just forgot to tell me about Oprah. That would have been yeah. a, that would have been a great first week for you if she, if she gave you that news on your you, show. You know what? She got huge ratings for us anyway, so it was a great week. But right. it's uh, I didn't blame her. If I had my own network, I'd hold something like that back for it as well. People yeah. are saying you were responsible for the uh, whole Gervais uh, controversy at the uh, Golden Globes. That I was to blame? That you actually leaked out that there was a problem between the production staff and him and the, uh, him being mean-spirited and no. that nobody really did care backstage that it was your, you, you um, just fibbing. <laughs> no, no. I, a, I never said it. B, it's completely untrue. But C, had I thought of it, I definitely would have done, done it. it. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got credit for it anyway, because that's what I, uh, I read in a few things that. Uh, no, you know, my view is that like, the more mischief, the better. You know, I, they, I subscribe to Oscar Wilde's great saying if there's one thing worse than being talked about, it is not being talked about. So yeah, uh, if, if people want to believe that kind of stuff, game on. Yeah. Do you yeah. think the media has gotten, because you, you, you were at the mail and then there was pictures published that weren't. They turn out to be hoaxes. Which, Daily, Daily Mirror. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, the Mirror. Yeah. Um, do you think it's gotten to a point where it's so competitive? There's so many. Uh, it's kind of gotten a bit tabloid where everybody's just rushing to get it first. Uh, and it's not just, I mean, it's every outlet. It well, seems. the problem now is that news is, you know, in the old days, you'd buy a newspaper to find out what had gone on. Now, as you've, you know, everyone's got iPads and computers and stuff. We all know what's happening in real time. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm on Twitter feed with all these news organizations. That's all you need you're on, your, on your phone. If you want to know what's happening, mm. doom, 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 and it streams in. So the old uh, reason for newspapers has disappeared. Uh, and it makes news un unbelievably fast now. And it's dangerous. You're absolutely right to say that because apart from anything else, technology is now so sophisticated. You can hoax anybody if you want to. Mm. Uh, with information, with pictures, with video. Everyone knows you can. You know, you guys know better than most. You're in a studio where you can do whatever you like in here. So it's become much harder for news organizations generally. A, to compete because news is just flashing around in real time. And B, because there's a lot of people out there that want to con you. It's hard. Mm. Didn't they used to lose, like, the news divisions always lost money years ago, and it seems like that, they, 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 accepting that and going, well, news divisions are going to lose money has changed, and it became this, uh, it was in the public we have to get ratings. Kind of thing. Well, I, I think, look, I have two views about this. I mean, one is that I think there was a bit of pomposity from news divisions in the past as well. It's like, we are serious news, and the only news that matters to people is serious news. I don't agree with that. I don't think the only news that we all want to wake up to every day has to be involving famine, death, disaster, and war. Mm. I just don't. And I think that there's a healthy balance to be struck. News is something that somewhere is a 
great quote that came out from, I think it was Lord Beaverbrook in England who owned a lot of newspapers. News is something that someone somewhere doesn't want published. Hmm. That's pretty much the yardstick. And, you know, a newspaper at its best or, a, uh, you know, any kind of news show ought to always have that in mind. Whatever it is, it's something that somebody somewhere is going to be a little bit annoyed about. And then it's news because then it's like it's something out there that may have been suppressed otherwise. I think it affects the uh, or at least it has affected the, the credibility of uh, newsmen and newswomen because uh, in the old days you had Walter Cronkite yep. and, and, and he was actually out there not only broadcasting the news but collecting the news uh he was on site and then he'd come back and write well, okay, let, me do, and let me defend my 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 uh, uh news people because last week i think you saw american news anchors at their absolute best you had anderson cooper brian williams katie curry uh christian amanpour all these, all these legendary names all in the field in egypt getting physically attacked and mm-hmm. you know, most of them i mean anderson was attacked three times and not just you know quietly tapped on the shoulder he was punched in the head 10 times his car was smashed in you know these very very dangerous environment i don't know how they do it i couldn't do that my brother's a british army colonel done just on a seven month tour of, of afghanistan you know he can do it but i can't do that kind of thing and they are in incredibly brave people and so they still do that and you know there's no more credible people to me than people like anderson or brian or you know, katie so i don't think we've lost that the the thing that's changed which which you know people like walter cronkite never had to put up with is the internet and the internet is now spewing out information at such a speed and it's very hard to disseminate real proper accurate news placed by by good responsible news organizations like cnn for example and the blogosphere which is just spilling out a load of crap morning noon, I, and night. i think you get for every one part news you get 10 parts speculation yeah. mm-hmm. because uh that seems to be what a lot of the news channels are doing because of the internet uh you have to people want an answer immediately yeah. that's what they want well they, people also just have to fill space immediately so you have yeah. people writing without even thinking about right, what yep. they're right we were just up at sundance two weeks ago i went up and in the midst of uh, you know it was a rather large showy thing i essentially said hey i'm gonna keep my own movie not spend any money to release it. Try to release it without any spending any marketing. That's yeah. it. Uh, I saw so many fucking pieces where, like, in, even in Entertainment Weekly, there was a dude that was just like, if Smith does this, there's a good chance he'll become part of the evil empire he hates so much. And I'm like, <laughs> what? you didn't even think about what I fucking said. Like, <laughs> how is me taking my movie out by myself related whatsoever to fucking some corporation or evil empire? Like, Fuck they you, don't evil think. empire. <laughs> they, don't exactly. even, dude, they just write, and they're just like, well, Kevin likes Star Wars. People know Star Wars, and let's compare him to fucking Darth Vader somehow, even if it doesn't make sense, because next week it won't matter. Right, mm-hmm. right. So that's yeah. kind of frustrating, man. You're right. There is a lot of, like, there's one part news, say- like ten part fucking yeah, yeah. Yeah, but also remember, you know, people like us now though have options like Twitter and stuff. Yeah, people we can say, go out there and spread our and own truth. And you can get out there. Someone yeah. spread some lie about you. You can get straight on Twitter and say somebody said this. Here's the truth. So mm. actually, you can control your own message much better than you used to be able to. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But the truth is never nearly as entertaining though as the lie they put right. out. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. You used to be uh, a slave to message boards that were completely run and yeah. maintained by other people who whatever interest was theirs. That's what you had to deal with. And by with. the way, if you ever saw these loonies, right? They'd be in some oh, tiny yeah, yeah. dungeon, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's not and they'll be fair. On that that's not going, fair. Don't you fist and pump. Motherfuckers <laughs> don't. That's, that's an old, old stereotype, man. I've seen a lot of these cats. They can get pussy. They can fucking, uh, they can be charming. They're not like dudes dwelling or chicks dwelling <laughs> in basements anymore. I guess they could be if they yeah. wanted to. Exactly. If they lost 600 pounds and left the house. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, but they do. They tw- it's amazing what personal information. Like I had a relationship with Brooklyn Decker, and it's amazing. It's oh, like the really? way that was. It was kind of cartooned yeah. and parodied. It's, 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 <laughs> well, first of all, we're we're I'm that. just trying to start a little buzz about myself. <laughs> I, 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 I was furious when all the rumors about me and Scarlett Johansson hit the airway. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, it'd be wrong of me to try those. and deny that. I think it's, it's not the kind of thing I talk about. <laughs> but you know, you see how it happens. Yeah. Now, usually, people listen to this. They get on Twitter. They say, "Piers and Scarlett Johansson, really?" And before we know, I'll be denying it properly tomorrow. Right. And then uh, you'll be Twitter. like the man. <laughs> yeah. right. oh, I like clearing up rumors that nobody has ever started. Like, I, I did not fuck her. No, yeah. like, nobody <laughs> thought you did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one questioned it, ass. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how did you get the, how did you get the gig? I mean, uh, Larry King, obviously. Well, a large amount of money had to change ah, hands. <laughs> that's, that's handy. Uh, from me to them. No, it was, um, it was uh, look, I mean, Larry had been there 25 years. I think he was looking to, to sort of semi-retire. He'd done, as I say, 7,000 shows in 25 years. An incredible career. Uh, 
and the ratings as everybody knows in prime time in, on CNN were, were not good and I think they were looking for a change and I, ha- and I do a big interview show back in Britain which I've done for a few years it's a, a big success and they got the tapes in of those interviews and they realised that I'm, you know, I'm pretty comfortable interviewing politicians and celebrities and all that kind of thing um, and so we had a few more meetings and to my astonishment you know, I, I first talked to CNN about doing one or two specials with them the next thing I know I'm, I'm being offered the Larry King slot, which was Jesus. an incredible Amazing. thrill. Well, I have a question for you about interviewing. When you go into an interview, what is your mindset? Like, because it's not, it, there really is an art to getting information out of people. Well, I was saying, my, my brother, uh, the Army brother, has a uh, saying the seven P's, which is prior planning and preparation prevent piss poor performance. Mm. So, unlike Larry, who's great genius, and he really was a genius, was better walk in without much preparation. He didn't like to prepare too much mm. and just have a conversation <laughs> with people. You know, like, because, because he was radio trained, actually. Mm. You, know, you guys could do the same. You, you wouldn't need to prepare much. You could just, because you're such good talkers, you, you could just, just talk to people. Babbling. And yeah. you, know, you could ask them three or four <laughs> questions, and before you know, you know who they are and what they do mm-hmm. uh, and that was Larry's great gift was to have the art of a conversation I'm much more journalistic because of my background as a newspaper editor so I like to you know when I interview you I'll know more about you than A you'd like me to and B than you that's probably impossible. know that's impossible I'm so fucking <laughs> candid Pierce. Yeah. there's nothing out there that I'm like how could you know that I'll be telling you shit there. Yeah, he, oh, that's good. he lets it all out he'll man. be like well let's pull some of these pictures up <laughs> like, yeah. like, fuck he did find some that's photoshop <laughs> What do, you, what do you think when you're about to ask a question? Because sometimes we want to get information, but it's like you do think like, oh, I want the person to like me. And I, it's embarrassing to admit that feeling that at times you have, like you don't want to ask the question because you don't want them to get pissed off. What is your thought process when you're going to ask something or go into an area that you know they don't want to go into? Well, you, know, you can't go in with a sledgehammer and you have to be sensitive to the fact that they may be, you know, uh, touchy about this, as we would say back home, sort of, you know, a little bit edgy. I think you have to tread cautiously. I always try and treat people with respect, but I try and be very direct. I, I mean, I think the thing that I do differently to Larry is maybe I might look someone straight in the eye when it's a difficult moment and just ask them straight. And often it gets the best answer. Often the people in the back of their minds, they think, I don't want to go there. But actually, when they're actually confronted with it as a bold question, they often will start to talk about it. But have you had publicists tell you, all right, this is off limits. Don't mention they you know, do, this but subject. I would say, I also, OK, well, let's just we'll test the water, mm-hmm. you know. We'll test the water. <laughs> and so I had George Clooney on. And of course, and always people were saying, don't get into private stuff. It's about it's going to be about Sudan, and so, which is a very interesting story. And I talked to him about all that. But I got his dad in to sit with me. And George is in LA on remote. And so rather than asking George about his private life, I asked the dad about George's private I life. Asked, and that way, I'm, con- I'm not really contravening the agreement. I'm just circumnavigating That's it. That's pretty so, smart. Yeah. Yeah. That's so pretty I, said, smart. I said, would you let you've been married for 50 years, That's like years, when they Nick. took Pantangeli's brother into court. In yeah. the- <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> okay, he's here to support his brother. But it's quite good. I said, I said to George's dad, Nick, I said, uh, you know, you've been married a long time. Would you like to see George get remarried? <laughs> you know, so, uh, oh, well, man. I, I would, That's yeah. You know. That's, yeah. A great, That's a great sneaky. way to do it. But it's amazing how publicists will tell you, even in a show on CNN or, or, or any other show, it's like th- that you can't ask certain questions. Well, let me like, tell you, the thing, the thing is this. I, I think publicists uh, dig a hole for themselves and for their clients when they, they put should. things off limits. They're horrible. It's like Oprah Winfrey walked through the door and she said, you can ask me absolutely anything you want. Get, let's get going. Howard Stern, exactly the same thing. And the favorite interviews I ever do with people, because I'm the same, you can ask whatever you like. I don't have mm. to answer. I don't have to tell you anything. But I think a journalist or an interviewer or anyone on radio, TV, newspapers, you, you should have the basic human right to ask somebody anything you want to ask them. And the moment you start putting limits on it, these people become less interesting. You know, when I read mm-hmm. a very controlled interview or see one on television where there's a big story about this person and they haven't talked about right. it, you know that the interviewer has been gagged or agreed to be gagged. Absolutely. It's boring. And the person looks more boring. Mm-hmm. And it also, I think, when, when you give a chance to somebody to deny something or explain, like, I would always want to be asked if something came up that was unpleasant so I, they could hear my words on it instead of what was printed or what was said by mm-hmm. other people. Yeah, like, yeah, that's a great opportunity for the artist. Yourself. But the publicists overprotect them. Get, Massively overprotective. Getting back to Oprah, mm. what did she say about the lesbian thing? I forgot. Well, she'd already done all that with Barbara Walters, so right. uh, and made it quite. Did you go there a little bit? Well, not really. What's what someone has said in an interview? Three so you don't want to like keep hammering. A, I'm not a lesbian. B, I never have been. I never even thought about being. She can't be more unequivocal. Um, so I mean, I would take her at face value. I mean, it's interesting. Her relationship with Gail King is very interesting because she's the best friend she has in the world. But I, I genuinely think they are just incredibly close friends. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they are lesbians. So to me, it was a kind of. Yeah, it's one of those stories. 
stories the media would love to believe. And because Oprah never really denied it, it sort of gets out there. But I honestly don't think, I, I think she tells the truth. I'm yeah. actually doing Leno Friday and Gail King is the lead guest. And I'm just going to put my face in her dressing room and say, come on, is it true or bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> come on. That's, that's, that's the way to get to the bottom. Yeah, of I'm not going to leave until they pull me away. It's going to be a really <laughs> ugly moment. Oh, and they it, will. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, Fred. <laughs> the virus. Sirius XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show.